All right. Uh, so really what I wanted to do with focusing on today was kind of uh, do more work on these actual engine areas, right? Because at this point, at least in the newest video lectures, you know, we've got this whole thing built up, right? We're going to do a little bit of touch-up to get rid of the star here and maybe take care of some triangles later on. But I figured we'd take a break from that for now. We've got a pretty good base mesh with pretty strong edge flow through most of this. And I really just wanted to kind of focus on the engines more. Uh, we're really just going to focus on one engine, and then we're going to kind of do another lecture, pretty much identical lecture that we'll record as well for this back engine as also. Because, you know, uh, the more you see it, the better you get, right? It's always great to see uh, these lectures multiple times. Now, one of the things we want to keep in mind, and this part's going to be pretty straightforward. We've kind of already seen this a bit, and this is great to focus on it. Uh, remember, three for face mode, right? Uh, remember, we have our edit modes. Uh, three is the face selection edit mode, right? If you hit three on your keyboard. And I could select, like, say, maybe this face right here. Now, this is a giant N-gon. Now, you'll notice this N-gon's not really posing too much of a shape issue here, right? Um, N-gons, if they're flat and on flat surfaces, they're planar, basically, don't necessarily always cause a problem. Remember how we kind of had some of those on our room? But ideally, particularly when you're dealing with stuff that's got a lot of curvature, you really want to be dealing with primarily all quads, maybe an occasional triangle if it's not doing weird stuff to your shape, right? Like we've seen on this mesh. Now, some people will actually solve this with some quads in the center here, and that really depends on what you're going for, right? If you have a, a very, if you have a big star here, um, it's not going to look bad on the base mesh at all. But if you were going to do some sculpting around there, it could do some weird stuff. So even though technically you could make this all quads in the center here through something like. Uh, grid fill, um, we're going to just kind of focus on making a really small star area. That's, uh, that way it's not going to cause too much problems. It's a little more straightforward and easy to do. It's, uh, uh, the shape stays a little more circular. Um, but you do have to be careful with a really big star here if you're going to do some sculpting on the inside part of this. It'll do weird stuff. So we're going to make sure that our star here is going to uh, have a, a really small influence around a, a really small section. Uh, but technically, there's other ways where you could you know, inset in a couple times delete this and then use some grid fill uh, to get a, a, a more quad shape. Uh, but it also use, loses, tends to lose a little bit of that circularity. So it depends on what you need, right? But we're just going to use a bit more inset on this, right? Uh, so I could easily use our inset tool. We've seen this several times, right? Inset. And we can just left click on this uh, uh, yellow to bring this in a bit. There we go. Now, if I wanted to, I could move this up as well, right? W for move. Now, in this case, if I did want to move this along its normal direction, right? Remember, we've started to see this more and more on this project. But remember, there is up here global, right? Global. And you see how there is a section in the global area that's just normal, right? You'll notice that when we click on this, it says transform orientations. This basically orients or rotates your manipulator to be aligned up with certain things like the world, that's global. Local is more of kind of like um, global, but for an object. So if an object's been rotated, it'll kind of be lined up to that. Normal lines up your manipulators to their normal directions or their average normal direction. So if you ever need to move a face just along normal, there is the push tool to do it, right? Which is actually a nice one. It's kind of a, uh, I'm trying to remember where it's at. Uh, right down here, right? There is the push tool. Uh, or shrink flatten, right? Shrink flatten is actually the one I tend to use for it, so I have a quick key for it. Uh, but also, you have the ability to switch to normal direction, which is also great. So I just kind of move this out a little bit. You see how it kind of just goes out, kind of giving us a little bump there. But we are moving it along its direction, right? So remember, you can reorient your manipulator. Uh, just like this one right here, you see the pivot point. That's kind of the center of it, right? So Blender actually has some really, really nice abilities to reposition and reorient your manipulator to do different cool stuff. They're a Blender's actually quite good at this. Um, and we've dabbled with it a little bit, right? We've already seen it a little bit on this model, this project, but we also saw it a little bit uh, for our chandelier on our last project. Remember, you can uh, switch these. You can change these, right? And you can always turn it back. It's always good to kind of turn back to global. And then I can do another inset. Oops, that's not inset. Uh, we can do another inset. And I'm going to do another inset. Remember, you can always hit R for scale if you want to scale this in a little bit more. But I want this to be quite small, right? So you see how I've kind of got that really, really small here. 
And then I'll do another inset here really quick. And that's actually a little too small. So let me uh, maybe inset that one more time. There we go. And then maybe one more inset. There we go. So you see I'm just kind of insetting this several times. It's that inset tool. It's how we kind of started to build this in the first place. Remember, inset is like extrude, right? It creates a new geometry like an extrusion. In fact, it's the same edge of the pattern structure. But instead of moving it in and out along the normal directions or just however, whatever axis you want to move it on, it scales. Now you'll notice I did a couple of insets so that when I merge this down, we're going to have a really small area that the star influences, right? Now, in this case, I want to switch to one, right? So with that face selected, if I switch to one, you'll notice how it automatically converts the selection to vertices. It's actually one of the really neat things Blender does. Whatever selection you have, when you switch to a different selection type, it will convert that, right? So that was just in face mode, right? Three for face selection. Got that face selected, inset it a couple times. So we've got a lot of quad strips here, and that this area is quite small. That way we can do sculpting on most of this and not have a problem. We're not likely going to need to sculpt anything here that would be do weird stuff. So generally, if you're going to have a big star in here, it should influence a very small area if you want it to work well with sculpting later on. Uh, the only other option is to kind of use grid fill to build quads. and so It's a little trickier than we need to, particularly if we're smart about doing it this way. But remember, if you hit one, it automatically converts to vertices. And your face is now converted to all those vertices selections. Now, if I right-click, right, we have the Vertex Context menu. And you'll see way down here, there is a feature called Merge Vertices. And you can use Collapse, but you can also merge at Center. Now, since I only have just this one face selected, I could do At Center. If you had multiple faces on different parts of the model selected, you'd end up using Collapse, right? But I'm just going to merge vertices at center. So when you right-click, Vertex Context Menu, you have the ability to merge vertices at center. And you see what it does is it welds those vertices down to a single vertex in the center here. This does create a big star with triangles right here, but they're a small section. So if you try to do some sculpting in here, when you bake a normal app later on, it's going to get weird and distorted and stretched. But because we made sure it's quite small, we can still do a lot of sculpting out in these areas, and it's not going to cause too much of a problem. So basically, this kind of uh, geometry section, if it's quite small, shouldn't cause you any sculpting problems later on, right? So it's kind of one of the things. Either that should be all quads, do something like gr grid fill, um, or it should just be small, right? So that, so that this set of triangles doesn't affect a lot of the mesh. All right. So that's how you can actually kind of effectively kind of finish this off and not have a giant end gone there. I'm going to do it on the bottom here. So I'm going to go to three for face mode, right? Three for face selection, select this face. And I can just do the same thing, right? Inset tool, left click drag on that to scale in a little bit, left click drag, left click drag. Just so we have enough to kind of get a, a decent sharp shape here as well as kind of make this small enough. I'll probably do one more here just to make sure it's quite small. There we go. So we always want to make sure that this area that's going to be triangles and a big star, remember that star is a vertex with a lot of edges coming out of it. The bigger the star, the more problematic it can usually be to shape or animate. Uh, in this case, since it's all uh, coplanar and flat polygons on a non-curved part of the mesh, it's, and it's small, it generally shouldn't cause much of a problems. Uh, but remember, you can then just hit 1 to switch to your move tool, or your uh, select, uh, your vertex edit mode. Just those vertices are selected now. So remember, when you have a selection and you switch to a different selection mode, it converts that for you, which is really, really cool. Right-click, merge vertices, right? It's part of your vertex context menu. Way down here, merge vertices at center. And that'll merge all those vertices down to a single vertex in the center of the selection. So if you have multiple selections in different parts of your model, that's where collapse is going to work better, because it kind of does the same thing, but for the independent selection areas. And now we can see we've got a kind of better form and structure for this, right? I'm going to save as here really quick. So I'll say this is version 7. 
because I do want to do some review lecture on this for you guys this week. So that's one of those neat things that you could actually do to kind of uh, finish these off, right? To make sure it's not end gons. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do for you today was to show you a bit about the cursor feature, right? And we're going to do all this again on the back section. And you don't even have to be here quite yet, right? It's always one of those things I like to go a little bit further ahead just so you guys have an idea of how this works. If you are ready for it, you can start to explore it. But I want to kind of create a little bit of an engine here. Now, on this one, I'm just going to create a separate cylinder and move it over. But I think on the next one, since we've already have kind of gone through this lecture a bit, I'll show you how to use the uh, add primitive feature, right? There's a new a feature that's been in a couple, of ver a couple of versions now, which is quite cool. But in this case, I want to make a small cylinder. So remember, if I go back out to four for object mode, I can go to add. Although, if you want it to be part of this mesh, you could do that, right? So it's kind of up to you on how you want to approach this. You can always separate later on. So if I'm in three for face mode, I can add a cylinder, but it will kind of duplicate it because of the mirror. So I think I'll uh, do it in object mode currently. So remember, today's quiz, four for object select, right? Four for object select. Go to add, mesh, cylinder, right? We've done this before. It's how we started this ship actually, right? This is our, our, our hover vehicle. So add mesh cylinder. In this case, remember, we can always go to the add cylinder options down here to make sure it's less complicated. Uh, in this case, I think I'll go uh, eight this time instead of 12. But remember, you should go to the add cylinder kind of button here, bottom, bottom left corner. Make sure that vertices number, the very top one is a lot smaller than 32. And then, of course, I can hit 3 for face mode, W for move. Remember, the white circle is your view move, but middle mouse button also does that. So you just hold down middle mouse button. R for scale. Middle mouse button will do its own uniform scale for that, so I want it to be smaller here. Maybe scale it up a bit there. Because I want this to kind of be uh, an engine, right? Maybe a thruster. W for move, for view move, and I can kind of line it up here. Maybe even do a bit of rotation. You know, do a little view rotate. Just kind of get it lined up here to kind of be like a little thruster sticking out there. Remember, E is rotate, W is move, R is scale. Those are all quizzes we've had several times. They're up on the board. And remember, middle mouse button will automatically do the view move or the view rotate. So it's always that white circle on your move and rotate. And your scale, remember, it's kind of your cent, uh, your uh, the white circles do your uniform scale. So it scales everything the same size, right? Instead of just scaling one axis, it scales all the axes. Middle mouse button works for all of those. And we could apply a, a, mere mo a subdivisional modifier, a mere modifier on this later on. Um, but what I want to do is I want to be able to take this engine, and I want to be able to copy it around this engine down here. Now, we know we have spin duplicates to do that. Remember how we kind of did it to our little orbs and our ropes on our chandelier? So that part's not new. What is, however, going to be new is the cursor feature right here. And like I said, we're going to see this on the back engine also. So I'm going to, you're going to see it a second time in real lecture, right? In new lecture. And then, of course, we'll do a bunch of review lecture on it. This is a bit tricky. So if you're not ready for it, Today it's okay, right? There's plenty of time to still add these parts. It's separate objects. But I wanted to start to expose you guys to this idea and how this works, and this is a neat trick, and have a video for you for it. So I said, we'll do it a second time on the back engine anyways. So in this case, I really want to use the cursor, but I want to kind of center it in a different area. Now, we've noticed to this point, some of you guys have accidentally found out about this, right? There is that little orange dot that's the center of your object. But there's also kind of this little circle that's kind of like a candy cane, right? It's kind of a candy cane. It's kind of a little circle with red, white, intervening kind of shapes. That's your cursor. What's really cool about your cursor is you can do some neat stuff with it. So if I say go to two for edge loops, right? And I double left click on, say, this edge loop right here, because we did a couple insets, so there should be an edge loop here, right? Two for edges. 
double left click on one of these edge loops. It doesn't really have to be that one, but it should be one of these edge loops in here. Double left click on it, select it. What I can do is I can actually go to cursor, right? It's right below your selection tool. In fact, C is the click key for it, C. Now you notice when I click on cursor, it's its own little tool, right? It's right below selection tool, it's right here. It's the one that's kind of the circle, candy cane circle, right? Red, uh, red and white alternating circle shape. And you'll notice that there is an orientation control. And we could set it to be geometry, right? I usually go to orientation geometry once it's on. What's cool then is I can actually click, and you see how that sets the orientation to these faces? That's really cool. I can then go to mesh, snap, right? Mesh, snap, cursor to select it. And what that does is it centers it to the selected edge loop. So like I said, this is a little tricky just because it's a couple steps. But if you turn cursor on and you tell the orientation to be geometry, it lets you orient this to the, basically the normal direction, these faces, right? But also, since we have this edge loop selected, when we go to mesh snap, you'll see we can snap cursor to select it. And that'll snap this to the center of this edge loop. We could then turn cursor off or switch to a different tool. And now you'll see that your cursor is oriented right there. And if I go back to object mode and I select this other object, you see how the cursor is still oriented there? And now if I want to, I can go to three for face mode. All the faces should be selected, but if they're not, remember, select all. And remember, way down here, we have that spin feature. It kind of looks like a pie with a slice taken out of it. If I hold left mouse button down on it, Remember, it brings up options, and one of those is spin duplicates, spin duplicates, right? And you'll notice that we can actually tell the orientation of this tool to be cursor, right? So if we go to global up here, you'll see there's an option for cursor. And you'll notice in the, uh, the actual tr uh, transform pivot, there's also 3D cursor. Usually the orientation will work fine for it. But you'll notice that your actual orientation and your center have 3D cursor options right up here. And now you'll see if I go to duplicate this, and I'll go to the op spin options down here, right? Use duplicates. Make sure to tell the angle to be 360 degrees. And then I can absolutely go in here and say, hey, I'm going to have less steps, so I have less of those. Well, I kind of think 10 was good. We're not gonna use all of them, we'll get rid of some of them. But you notice how it's that spin duplicate, right, that we use for our chandelier balls, right, those little spheres? But you notice how this is spin duplicating around that cursor. So you see how these are oriented to the engine? This is an awesome feature, and not a lot of software can easily do this, in fact, I know for a fact Maya really can't easily do this. Uh, Moto could quite easily do this. Um, Blender quite easily does this. Cursor, not something you need all the time, but man, when you need it, you're glad you have it. So this is what Cursor offers us. At this point, we're good, so I'll just kind of go to three for face mode, you know, hit Q to get out of there. There's probably an original duplicate here, right? The first usually gets copied, so I'll just hit delete faces. And I don't need all of these. So remember, if you shift left, click, shift left, click, shift left, click on some faces, remember you have your select link feature. It's usually right bracket. I said it's spacebar because I use it enough that I'd rather be spacebar than bracket. And I don't animate, so I don't use that for playing the animation. And then of course we can hit delete faces. And now we've got a cool start for those engine parts. I can, of course, go to four for object mode. I can go to add modifier mirror. And so the mirror doesn't use the cursor, it uses that center of the object. We don't need clipping on for this one because those are separate. But now you see how we have thrusters started up. 
And we're going to do more work to those thrusters later on. Put them sub Ds. We'll do some insets on the ends. But I really wanted to show you what your cursor could do. Now, if you need to reset your cursor, well, and we'll probably turn our uh, orientations back to their default median point and global. But you will notice that if you go back to object, right? So when you're an object level, there is a snap there, right? So mesh mode, when you're actually in face mode or edge mode, right? When you're actually in an edit mode, you'll see in the mesh menu, you'll have snap. But when you're object, it's in the object menu. And you see how you can actually snap your cursor back to world origin? What that does is it repositions and reorients your cursor to be back at that start point that it had. All right. Uh, that's a great place to stop there.